It's always the first line of Gino Oriama's list of goals for UConn women's basketball win the regular season conference championship. Tonight, the Huskies begin their pursuit of a 22nd Big East title against longtime rival Providence, live on SN1. And hi, everybody from Gamble Pavilion. Happy to be here with Megan Kumo. I'm Alan Bestwick. So the Huskies come into tonight's game third-ranked, undefeated on the season at 5-0, with three wins over teams ranked in the top 10 at the time. This team, what's led to their success they've had so far this season? Well, I think a big reason is Aaliyah Edwards and the, and the way she has played, the dominance that she has shown early. You know, she's mature. She's a junior. She was on campus all summer working at her game. The confidence, the aggressive take to the basket. She's finishing. Gosh, she's shooting 62% from the floor. But on the defensive end, she's acting quick hands, great feet. She can rebound like a demon in there. But look at that great footwork, hands up for the block. She's averaging a block a game, a double-double she's averaging. She's had more double-doubles in four games of their five than she had in the first two years combined. She's ready. Uh, and then we'll lead this team onto the floor tonight in their home white uniforms as we check the starting lineups presented by Subaru of New England. Familiar starting five for the Huskies. Nika Mule to run the point with Fudd, Lopez, Seneschal, Aubrey Griffin, and Edwards. For Providence, the player to watch is Janae Crooms, five, their leading scorer. Put up 27 against the Huskies in the game in Providence a season ago. So ready. They had uh, just uh, under 500 tickets available as of this morning for this game. Big crowd has turned out to watch Gino Ori and his squad. And we go with UConn in the home white uniforms. Providence in the road blacks underway in Gamble. Providence starting in man-to-man -man defense, fighting through screens, not switching. There's Fudd driving to the hoop. Nice floater mm -hmm. to get the Huskies on the board. You know, Fudd has started slow offensively the last couple games. I think uh, UConn got to be happy with her knocking down her first shot. So there is five, Janae Crooms. She's the one to watch for Providence and the one that the Huskies want to take away defensively. Yeah, she's a dynamic scorer. Going to be a travel. First turnover of the ball game goes to Jim Crowley's team. Crowley in his seventh year as the Friar head coach. A season ago, he had the youngest team in the Big East. They've got a year's experience on them, but they're still, they know they're up against it tonight. And he's such a nice guy. You like yes. the way he talked to the official, you know, very nicely just trying to point out a few things. Aubrey Griffin to the rim. Her athleticism is unbelievable. She makes this team so much better out last year with some injuries. Boy, is she just a fun player to watch. 22, Bryn Farrell, one of the two transfers into this Providence program. She lets it fly from long range. No good. Edwards with her first rebound of the night. Drives into a double team. Nice kick to Griffin. And UConn will reset. What a slash, but the pass went through the hands of AZ Fudd, who was not expecting it and looking the other way. Keys to the game, presented by Nissan. Well, that player wearing number 10 in white is going to be one of them. Yeah, almost had an assist there. But I think with Paige Beckers out, and the kids are, are not used to passes like that. Rika Mule leading the nation in assists per game for this UConn squad, leading the team, really, in so many ways. Well, she's the heart and soul of this team, plays with such great energy. Into the paint was Emily Archibald, couldn't get the shot to go. Another rebound for UConn. Huskies run, Aubrey Griffin. Got it. What a great run by Aubrey and a tremendous find by Mule. Six to nothing, UConn early in the going. Barrow cut off, defended by Lopez Seneschal, threw one up at the rim, didn't go. Another rebound for Edwards, Mule runs. Intercepted by Emily Archibald from Providence. Yeah, she got bumped as she tried to make that pass. 31 is Olivia Olsen, no. Second one, no. Gonna be knocked out of bounds. And it's gonna be a Providence ball. UConn does such a good job of getting out in transition. The nice pass from Yule, but you can't underscore the effort of Aubrey Griffin running up the floor. 
making yourself available for that play. Just hustle. Absolutely. There's Sneaker Mule tipping it away as Friars tried to get it to Cruz and the pass to a running again. Aubrey Griffin <laughs> and a timeout, Providence. Hey, if you work hard and run, they'll find you. Hallmark of Gino Ariema's team's stingy defense turned into aggressive offense. Nika Mule guarding Providence's best player gets the steal. Aubrey Griffin gets the score. And it's Huskies by eight early on. Huskies have raced out to an 8-0 lead on Providence with uh, less than three minutes played in the ballgame. Cuomo's Court Vision brought to you by Yale New Haven Health with some early Nika Mule highlights. Well, you know, here you, you see Nika Mule is in the passing lane, right? Hand extended. You see her leg there in that passing lane. She's one pass away, keeping an eye on it, seeing her, her man and the ball. Great job knocking down the ball. And then the assist to the streaking Aubrey Griffin. That's just tremendous defense. And it's just textbook, old school, nothing fancy, just get in your stance, play great defense, hand in that passing lane, see the ball, see your man, and then the pretty finish on the break. So Mule with two assists already in the ball game. Aubrey Griffin, three for three with six points already in this ball game. So let's see what Providence does out of the timeout here after Jim Crowley took a chance to try and regroup his team. Huskies with the full court pressure. Kylie Shepard, unanimous pick to the Big East all freshman team a season ago. One handles the ball for the Friars. Defended by Mule. The double team comes, and that is going to be a foul on Griffin, her first in the ballgame. This might normally be a moment where we go to Maria Marino for her first in game <laughs> yes. report today. Maria not with us tonight. She's under the weather. We wish uh, her a quick recovery. Absolutely. And we'll see you soon, Maria. I'll be back for this next week when the Huskies take on Princeton here on SNY. Another missed shot by the Flyers. They're over six in the game. Smart pump fake inside by Fudd to get Crooms off her feet. Shepard spins around and gets that one to go with the left hand. Kylie Shepard gets top on the floor. Yeah. Tough spin there by the 5'9 sophomore. She's banged up, and Kylie wasn't sure she was even going to play tonight, but in the lineup, he gets Providence's first points. He was Edwards down low. Kicks the mule. Back to Edwards, top of the key. That line. Rebound by Coombs for Providence. And running, and a nice pass from Coombs, but missed the layup was Olivia Olsen. She's a 53% shooter. She doesn't miss shots like that often. Comes back and gets called for the foul at the other end. Really good offense here on the offensive end. Check this out. Nice back cut there from Fudd. Terrific look from Lopez Seneschal. This team is a really good passing team. They're unselfish, and they move really well without the ball. One of the best at that for UConn this year has been the player you're looking at at the free throw line, Aubrey Griffin. How fun has it been to see her return to the form that she has after missing an entire year injured? She changes this team so much, Alan, and makes them so much better. Her athleticism, the way, first of all, she can guard anybody. She can guard a guard or a forward. So she changes their dynamic defensively, but what she can do for them offensively is she not you know, she, yes, yeah, she shoots more. She's a, you know, a three-point threat, so to speak. But it's her offense, the, the ability, the offensive rebound, and just be another scoring option out there. They didn't have it last year. She has eight of UConn's 12 points in this one. Shepard spins. Step 
through two defenders yeah, in the left-hand layup. Shepard really good taking that extra step. And it's not a walk. That's all four of Providence's points so far. He will drive. Through Shepard will pick up the contact and the foul. Yeah, classy move by Shepard to pick her up. So you fake left and then drove hard right. Number 10, Nathan Mule, two foul shots. Nathan Mule only taking her seventh free throw of the year. She has been so amazing distributing the ball for UConn. Mentioned leads the nation in assists per game. I can't remember a, a UConn guard in the last 30 years that has had that impact offensively that Nathan Mule has had for Gino Oriana. There have been a few good guards that have come through the program. Yeah, I mean, yeah, including one who wore that number, Sue Bird. First sub of the game in for UConn. It is Caroline Gashar off the bench for UConn. Aubrey Griffin will take the seat. Casey Fudd picks up guard and turns with Griffin on the bench. And you looking up near the top of the key. It's Gracie Fosa. Really good team defense. That possession by UConn. Edwards, where's the post? You know, that's also the patience and the maturity of that young lady, Aaliyah Edwards, to make that kind of move in the low post. She wouldn't have been able to make that as a freshman. You mentioned that word maturity. When I talked with Aaliyah before the game today and asked what the difference was, that was one of the words she said. Maturity as a person and a player. Bodies on the floor in the back row. Nika Mule took a shot in the face. Is reaching for her nose. While Lafosa drives the lane. Yes. Three bounces off the rim and doesn't go. Here's the play where Mule, you see she got a forearm right to the nose there. She was trying to hustle to get what she thought might be a loose ball. Inadvertent contact, no foul. Again, Mule continuing on. No issue for UConn. There's Leah Edwards through two players. And that went somehow. She gets a strong finish there. What were you laughing about? You were laughing something about what I said about Mule. Well, it's going to take, yeah, it's going to be more than that. It's going to take <laughs> a stronger shot to her face to get her out of the game, that's for sure. Yeah. Boom, just tries to drive baseline against Bouchard, cut off by Mule on the double team, feet outside to Archibald. No. Huskies on a 7-0 run here. And that ball will go out of bounds. Well, this first uh, game of the Big East conference play for this season for UConn and Big East uh, so far through non-conference play, they've been strong. Big East teams. And, uh, uh, really strong. Look at that. Four teams ranked in the top 25. And Maddie Seagrass is one to keep an eye on Villanova. Just a phenomenal player. Very, very quick. AC Fudbucket on the inbounds play. Yeah, three of the top scorers in the nation all are in the Big East. You mentioned Seagrass. There's Fudd. And uh, Anissa Morrow for the call. And of course, uh, don't overlook Creighton. As Lopez Seneschal gets a three. We talked earlier about how Lopez Seneschal changes this team. That's an example right there. A threat from three-point range on the break that they didn't have last year. And she's a four-year season veteran from Fairfield. Logan Cook gets a rebound of the scramble, gets a second rebound of the scramble, still can't get the ball to go in the basket, now does. Mm -hmm. snaps a UConn 12-0 run. Really good hustle there by Logan Cook. She probably came over and pushed and we end with a little bit, but the officials are letting it go. It's not a team in this first quarter. Lee Edwards will draw contact and will get the shot. Mm -hmm. Just one. 
They couldn't let this one go. <laughs> you see the screen set, and then the nice roll, and just used her body so well to get the defender on her back, the strong dribble, and then use the glass. See, that's where her, her strength comes in handy. And as a freshman, and maybe even a sophomore, she doesn't make that with the three-point opportunity. She's so strong at confidence. So adds the free throw and heads to the bench. Charlotte Patterson will come into the ball game for UConn. Nika Neal has also gone out. Aubrey Griffin is back in. This time from Aubrey Griffin. Just really good active defense. You see all the hands in the air, but there, see that right hand in the passing lane. It's exactly how you want to play it. And probably a smart foul there by Megan Herter to stop the fast break. 13th steal of this young season already for Aubrey Griffin. Down to about 30 seconds to go. Mule back into the ball game. Fudd goes out at the end of the quarter. Lopez Seneschal pulls it back. Gets caught. And the body of the chance to reset. Maybe got away with a foul. I don't think there was a major foul. Shot clock at eight. Mule kicks back out to clip in. Yes. She's worked out her mid-range game, her three-point game in the in this year that she took off due to injury and surgery. At the buzzer, too strong for Olivia Olson. And UConn ends quarter number one with a 21-point lead. Aubrey Griffin has been the star of the show in this first quarter. She's in double figures already with 10 points, four for four from the floor. Ready for the start of the second quarter here at Gabble Pavilion. Huskies leading Providence by 21 after a very efficient opening quarter. Check out our UConn Fan Choice poll presented by Duncan. Tonight we are asking you which opponent is UConn's biggest threat for the Big East Championship. There are some good choices on that line. Go to sny.tv slash vote game. Cast your vote. We look forward to seeing your thoughts on that later in the ballgame. Well, in that uh, opening quarter, UConn shooting 85% percent from the floor good start offensively well look at this uh, last offensive possession you see providence in a man i like the spacing you see uconn in their white jerseys everyone you know pass screen move keep moving dribble penetrate and kick and look all the defense is down there ugly griffin wide open for the shot good patience good spacing good movement Aubrey Griffin leading scorer in the ballgame through one quarter. Four for four from the floor, two for two from the free throw line. Ten points, three rebounds, and a steal. And she's back on the floor with her Husky teammates to start this second quarter. Lopez Seneschal. 
Dushan. Townsend on the floor with Griffin. As Providence tries to solve this UConn defense. Muir gets run over, no call. Long kick to the outside. Herder, no. Nice rebound, Lopez Sancho. Reaching back behind her to pull that one in. Send a shot off the screen. Sean, she'll pull off. And drop it. Such great poise and patience on this UConn offense so far in this first half. And not rushing through the Intercepts the inbound pass, and then there'll be a foul called on the floor, and that'll be on Providence. And you gotta give Patterson a lot of credit on that last possession, stepping in front of that, in that low post to steal that pass, perfectly timed, shows her great foot quickness, too. Patterson, the six foot two freshman out of Fort Wayne, as Lopez Seneschal goes to the bench for a uh, breather. Easy fud into the ball game for UConn. Janae Cruz with the ball for Providence. So far, shut out through one quarter. Oh, that's the player that held 27 on the Huskies last January. Drives to the rim, no. Rebound. Griffin. Trust me, Chino will never let his team forget that the <laughs> kids scored 27. Bud kicks the mule. That's a fly. <laughs> and Mule's so good this year so far. Picking when to shoot that ball. Three is way off range for another launcher ball. He saved in bounds and will keep playing. I talked about earlier, one of the luxuries you can pass, they're really getting scored from a lot of players and, and big score. Yeah, it's so different from last year, right? Yep. And I think part of it is because they they just move the ball so well and everyone moves so well without the ball. Sean couldn't get the shot to go and had her uh, rebound stripped away. <laughs> Griffin is there to pick it up. It's being defended by Mule. Who else? Mule kicks the ball. The quick release. Oh, <laughs> Nothing to it, Paige said. He's <laughs> working on foot. There's the kick to the corner. Shot too strong. Good rebound over the top. Olsen, she drives on Patterson, will get the foul. From Huskies, number 34, Ayanna Patterson. What a smart play there. You know, on the break, when the defense isn't really set, to dribble, penetrate, and then kick it out to a three, particularly someone like AZ Fudd. She didn't look like it, but she did appreciate that shot. Yes, she right? did. <laughs> So here's Olivia Olsen at the free throw start for Providence, a sophomore from the Albany area. Second on the team in scoring, first on the team in blocks. And over five shooting tonight, including two missed free throws. It's one of the things that happened to a young Providence squad a year ago. They came into this building and were totally overwhelmed by UConn. At one point, the Huskies had a 29-0 run in the year last year. That shot is Eric from Olivia Edwards back into the ball game. Rebounded by a full And again, some of that was because it was from the reaction to the game at Providence, where UConn didn't play as well as they would have liked. Wanted to send a message to his team that you can't let a kid score 27 points on you. Ball drives and will get fouled by Janae Cruz. That'll be the first on Providence's team leader. 
first cruise, second team Easy foul. fun Easy for fun this UConn team. Teams. Man, talk about shining in the biggest moments when needed. That, that's what your best players are supposed to do, right? Yeah, I mean, this kid is just, there, there's something so special about the way she plays. A rare miss from the free point line, or the free throw line. You see her parents, Tim and Katie, at every game. They're such dedicated parents to their child. We talk to AZ, and it's about health and confidence. She has both this season, and we're seeing what we thought she could be already uh, in a UConn uniform. You see her playing great defense right now, the good switch. And as great a scorer as she is, and she's scoring off the dribble this year, she's a terrific defender. But you know what? She's a great kid, and she's an unbelievable team. Look at this defense by UConn. Shot clock down to three. Raposo with a pull off. No. Rebound Olsen drives over Edwards and got the bucket. It's good hustle there by Olsen. UConn did so much well there. Yeah. They just couldn't track down the rebound. Lopez Seneschal from behind the arc. Too strong. Rebound right to Floyd. Nobody coming at her. She'll get fouled Perth, driving Perth, the paint. That'll be on the floor. That'll be on Kylie Shepard, her second for Providence. We're talking about Fudd. That was her first missed free throw of the season. <laughs> Had been 11 for 11 to that point. Easy fifth in the nation in points per game. The UConn's opening five contest. Here she is with the ball in her hands now. at the right time and that wasn't by accident there by Edwards. Good effort to get herself in good position. Yield stubbornly defending Farrell who somehow held on the ball and made the spin to her left. Yeah, Farrell did a great job there. I, mean, I thought that she was pushing off a little bit but I like that the refs are letting him play. Nice tough finish there by Farrell. Floor, that is going to be a foul on Lou Lopez Seneschal for UConn and bring us to a timeout midway through quarter number two. Solid start for UConn up by 22 over Providence. And of course you look tonight in this building some uh, 10,000 here to see UConn women's basketball play on a Friday night. So much uh, success on the athletic fields and facilities around the store's campus. It's a different campus than it was even 10 years ago, let alone yeah. 30 when I play here. And it's amazing the great crowd tonight because the men's hockey team is playing in Hartford. And I'm sure they've got a good crowd, a terrific crowd here in Tampa. And the men's basketball game here last night with a sellout crowd and yesterday. Yeah. 10,000 here in Tampa that seats just over 10,000. And I mentioned earlier, students lined up starting at noon today to see this UConn women's basketball team play. So they post it with the basket for Providence on their possession to start. And here's Mule for three. Nope. Long rebound, Lopez Seneschal will chase it down. Second chance here for the Huskies. Inside to Aaliyah Edwards. She's going to get called for the offensive foul. I don't like that call. Let's take another look at it. Working hard in there. She was pivoting. She got her a little bit with that right elbow, but. Yeah. I'm sure that's what they saw, because that was what stood out to me from that angle, which is where the referee would do the whistle was standing. So here is today Cruz with the hop jump, missed the shot. Skips the rebound, but it goes to Olsen. Providence with another chance. Skip pass. Yet again, 
again shows the athleticism and how she makes this team so much better. Can change direction, get hit, and finish on the run. Pretty special. So it'll be the second foul on Olsen. Griffin steps to the free throw line. Already with 12 points in the ball game, six rebounds, and two steals. And adds the third. What a game so far for Aubrey Griffin. No, I didn't get hit. a basketball thing of beauty right there. It really is. Nice. Oh, it's hard to get. You're going to have to take a leg off. It's right up to 13 points. Off of glass for three. <laughs> not sure. I'm not sure she called it, but she will certainly take it. Farrell up to eight points to lead the way for progress. Inside, Griffin. Working. Nice. When you're undersized in the lane, Turn and face, and then use your quickness. Fifteen for Griffin. Also loses Mule. Defended by Deshaun. That's a travel. UConn Women's Basketball hosts defending national champion South Carolina at the XL Center on Sunday, February 5th. Visit UConnTickets.com and build your own mini plan package and secure your tickets for what's going to be a must-see matchup. That will be a fun game, no doubt. Yes, it will. A lot of fun games. Princeton next here on SNY uh, next Thursday night. That'll be a fun one. Uh, we will be bringing her Tigers to town. Graduated from UConn, went on to have a tremendous, she's having an unbelievable coaching career. And a great tenure at Tufts, and now is at Princeton, and is just doing great things. Very instrumental with USA basketball as well. One Fires reacting very quickly to cut off UConn's drives. Second shot will go with you. Well, that's one way to make the offense look less awkward. Let's <laughs> train it through. Well placed, well placed. And here's two for Grace Ipfosa. He gets on the scoreboard for the moment. Scary Apple and Carol Walters standing by to give you all the first half highlights and analysis. Plus, continue the celebration of 50 years of Title IX. It's the Utah Women's Basketball Halftime Show presented by Duncan's. In 25 seconds of game time. Back through the hands of Lopez Seneschal, UConn turns it over. Yeah, what a what a first half for the Huskies. Halfway to 100. And uh, Aubrey Griffin and AC Frog have certainly led the way for UConn. Huskies shooting almost 70% from the floor and 62% from three. Final 10. Those are crazy numbers. Aren't they? Twins, no. His best player shot out. Two seconds. One. Lopez Seneschal with the exclamation point on the first half for UConn. The appreciation from the 10,000 here at Gamble tonight for the grad transfer from Fairfield who 
has shown stepping up to play for this team is right up around. She certainly made herself at home. Pretty good stuff. So that's eight for Lopez Seneschal. As uh, the Huskies shoot now 66% from beyond the arc, 70%. From the floor, it's 54-25, UConn, Gary and Kara are next. Huskies come out of the locker room to start the third quarter with a 29-point lead in their Big East Conference opener. It's 54-25 over Providence as we welcome you back inside Gamble Pavilion. Along with Megan Plumo, I'm Alan Westwick. Well, for UConn, you could not have started the night off any better. And one player in particular really shone in that opening few minutes of the ballgame. Yeah, Aubrey Griffin, you know, since she's ended this starting lineup, you know, she just changes the game with her incredible athleticism, the way she can drive, split the defense, get to the rim. She runs the floor exceptionally well. She cuts so well without the basketball. It helps when Nika Mule is finding her there. She's also worked on her mid to long range game. 15 points, seven rebounds, perfect from the floor. And I mentioned Nika Mule, and you see Nika right next to her. Nika, nine assists yep. of the 14 they had in the first half. And notably for the Husky defense, the leading scorer for Providence has not scored yet. Today well, UConn takes great out. pride in their defense, and, and they, they put different players on her, but AZ Fudd has done an outstanding job for one, trying to take Janae Burns just out of her rhythm offensively. Fudd will come out of the floor to start this third quarter, along with Aliyah Edwards, Nika Mule, Aubrey Griffin, and Rudo Pesenesha, same starting five at the beginning of the ballgame for UConn. It's Providence's worst nightmare right now to have Lopez Seneschal knock down that three right out of the gates. And now 10 assists, double-digit assists again for Nika Mule for another consecutive game. That's going to be a travel. She's got to wave a little kick in the beginning, <laughs> too. How about that? Fourth straight game with double-digit assists, the longest streak by a Husky since 1999. Awesome. That's incredible. What a force she has been, particularly when you consider the injury to Paige Beckers starting this season. So how long will it take Providence to get on the board to start the second half? They suffered for a while at the beginning of the first half, that went out of bounds off of Mule. And the problem, too, though, Alan, is how, the, how does Providence simulate UConn's defensive pressure in their practices? There's just no way that they can. Maybe they could get Ed Cooley squad in. <laughs> be a start. That'll be a turnover to Tobias. Well, that'll frustrate the coach to no end. Yeah, I mean, and Jim Crowley's got a young team. He's a good coach. He's, he's He's trying to, to work with what he's got, but, you know, he's got some injuries. They're not totally healthy. But UConn is just, right now, they just have more talented basketball players. Skip past the mule, 10 to shoot. Inside, Edwards. Back the other way, gets stopped. This is a great move by Edwards. She's so much more active. You see, you see, turn and face, dribble right, come back left, gets herself fouled. You have to come out of there with either a bucket or a foul, maybe both, but in that case, she came out with the foul. So, Ali Edwards in the hunt for another double double in this ball game. Uh, the difference between her sophomore season and this her junior season has been so impressive. I don't know, maybe there's some superpowers in that mask. <laughs> yeah, she you know she feels more comfortable with it, but Gino Oriama talked about the way that Maria Edwards has been practicing. And you know, it's it's not that complicated. That kid decided she worked hard all summer. She decided she wants to be great. 
And to be great, you have to be great in practice every day. You have to put great effort into practice every day. And it, she is, and it's showing in the games. Got the block there, and he's going to get called for the foul in the aftermath. Uh, three, and worse. Really good footwork, good, good body control, the good block, and then the kid fell with, with a little help. It was just good hustle all around them. Jones tried to get that pass behind Nico Mule. It went off Mule's back and out of bounds, so Providence gets another shot at it. Look at those numbers this season and last season for Leah Edwards. Another three. Mule tries to save it. Ball on the floor. And eventually a tied up ball will stay in the hands of Providence. Well, when you talk about the number of, sit of assists that AZ is getting, or rather Nika's getting, you know, it's pretty smart to pass it to number 35. <laughs> Uh, AZ making herself available, but Nika seeing her, and uh, there's no hesitation. Making sure she finds it. Good defensive communication by UConn, but Cruz supports one. And gets her first points of the night. Here's Aubrey Griffin. She holds. By Muir, lets it fly. No. And rebound by Olsen for Providence. Points to go with those 11 assists and a couple of steals. Cruz oh. drives the paint. Nice between players. Cruz. You can see a determination on her part to get on the board this quarter. There's Bud misses. Ooh, elbow right to the face of Lopez Seneschal by Brittany Farrell. Good to see Lopez Seneschal right up off the floor. Officials will talk. They'll send the teams to their benches. Will they look at that as an intentional foul? Oh, yeah, the upper arm. Got Seneschal right in the face. Actually, good. The official's going to come over and pull us in. So as expected, it, uh, the foul was called on Providence, and they'll check the video to see if it's an intentional foul or a call. Exactly. Chris Morris, Tom Danner, along with good. The good. The officiating crew here tonight. See, it's, solid yeah, black on the cheek. I mean, it was solid, and, and part of the problem what they look at now in terms of you know the intentional part of it. Um, or, or just a common foul, they'll determine that. But, you know, you have to be pivoting when you, and moving in, in the pivot with your feet. Right. And you could see her arms went ahead and her feet didn't move. So that's partially why they call the foul and they, she whacked her in the face. So that's part of it as well. So they have looked at the video. Now the officials are talking over and then they'll give us uh, the indication. All right, so while they while they decide that and uh, get us all squared away to resume action, we'll take a break. Time out. 6.38 to go in the third. So back at Gamble Pavilion, you see Lou Lopez Seneschal at the free throw line and no one else positioned nearby. Officials did upgrade the call on Providence's Brent Farrell to an intentional foul. Excuse me, so Lopez Seneschal will shoot free throws and then UConn will get the ball. 
Yeah, they said it was just excessive the way she threw her arm. Uh, yeah, I don't think she meant anything by it. It was an aggressive play. And the officials have to do what they can to keep the players safe. She she Contact to the head, you'll always get that look. So uh, you may have noticed we didn't interview Gino on his way off the court at halftime. It's because... Which I missed. Uh, yeah, I know you did. And, and people missed it. <laughs> but we are going to talk to Gino during live game action coming up after the next whistle. As Lopez Seneschal adds the free throws with that one. Looking no word worse for wear, getting that shot to the face. The 15 points now for Lopez Seneschal. Yeah, so you'll get your dose of Gino live during third quarter action coming up. Ought to be interesting. And of course, it begs the question we may ask her about the hair or anything like uh, that during the game. Block underneath. I'm going to let that go. Okay. Let's just keep it together. There we go. That's a good strategy, actually. Here's Edwards. A step back, blocked. Nice block by Olsen for Providence. Here's Cruz. Olsen underneath who gets it up and in over the top of Patterson who's in the ball game for UConn. What a terrific pass from Cruz. She's yes. got an added energy to her game in this third quarter, doesn't she? Yeah, she's a competitor. That is going to be an offensive foul on Nika Mule. And the UConn turnover. Uh, the arms <laughs> raised from Nika <laughs> likes what? Of course what? she's not happy with it. Well, listen, you know, I mean, as much as, as we've joked about Nika and fouls, that's one of the areas she's really cleaned up in her game. That is her first foul of the ball game. We're in the third quarter. Well, we've talked a lot about maturity of this Utah team, and that's, a, that's one way in which it manifests. You know, she, they need her on the floor. They don't, you know, she can't be committing stupid fouls, punching people or tackling people. They need her on the floor, and as a result, she's leading the country in assists. Shot with the clock running out. Eric. Here's Lopez Seneschal. Inside. Patterson with patience will draw the contact and the foul. And that brings us to the uh, midway timeout. Halfway through quarter number three. When we come back, the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriema, joins us. Festive on the campus here in stores outside of Gamble Pavilion. All the holiday decorations uh, going full bore. And pretty festive inside as well in the basketball capital of the world. UConn in the Big East opener for this season, leading Providence by 38 points midway through quarter number three. Husky shooting nearly 70% from the floor, 64% from three. And have four players in double figures in this one, led at this point by AZ Foot. Here's Ayanna Patterson at the free throw line, the freshman shooting free throws. As she knocked down that first one, it's so important for freshmen. You gotta knock down these, these foul shots. These are the little plays that will give her more confidence to be able to go out there and contribute more. Aaliyah Edwards with the hustle rebound. Ten to shoot for UConn. Get it into Patterson. She works hard. Doesn't get the reward. That's going to go out of bounds off of the Edwards and be a Providence ball. She's so frustrated. We saw she overshot it a little bit, and that's been the one thing that I that Gino has said about Patterson. She's just so eager, and she's so athletic and, and jumps so high. She just overshot that a little bit. Outside three for Megan Herbert. Megan Herbert three. Sophomore from the Albany area, sister of the NBA's Kevin Herter. Good jeans in that corner. Yeah, basketball. Mule for three. No. Nice rebound by Aliyah Edwards, and she'll get fouled. Try to pivot around. <laughs> So that is her ninth rebound for Edwards to go with 11 points so far. Third personal foul, 14 foul. Returning for UConn, number 44, all year. Third for the minute for the game. The defense will go to the bench for a break. Kicked out of bounds. 
Lopez Seneschal tried the no-look pass on the inbounds. The shot clock is supposed to be reset when you're at home. Figures. Bosa misses the extra. 70 36 Huskies. Griffin inside to Patterson, who hands Griffin, who is cutting. Smart cut there from Griffin, and what a pretty pass from the freshman Patterson. New season high for Aubrey Griffin in scoring. Patterson with the block. Logan Cook tried to go to the rim. And we did not run on the 42. It's all about. On the offensive end, it's movement without the basketball, right? You pass, the, your defender loses you. You see number three there. She turned away. Griffin wisely runs baseline side in the pretty pass from Patterson. Amari DeBerry into the ball game. 42 for UConn. Aliyah Edwards has left with another double-double long-range shot. DeBerry will have the rebound. Oh, missed it. Three point attempt. Here's Griffin again for three. No, DeBerry taps the rebound. Gets it inbounds to Lopez Seneschal. Great hustle there by DeBerry. Long for three. Ooh, Lopez cut off by Patterson. Stephen Court is at the scorer's table to check in for the Huskies' next whistle. Into Patterson. Working, working, cut off. Griffin gives her some place to go with the ball. They'll try again. Too strong. Protective goggles that Patterson wears have come loose. She's had to pop them up on her head. That shot is long. Rebound by Cook. Gonna step on the end line and turn the ball over to UConn. Patterson waiting at the bench. She needs more help with the team's glasses. She just found it running, walking back up the floor. <laughs> she has waved off uh, an inquiry from the referee. Although she needs to leave the game. So it is Benny Court. He's into the ball game. And Lopez Seneschal takes a seat on the bench with 18 points on six of eight from the floor, four of five from beyond the arm. Another double double in the game tonight. Her fifth in six games this season. Tipped by DeBerry, but rebound caught. And put, well, I shouldn't say rebound, it didn't hit anything. Aaron Ball caught, put up, and in. Also, we'll get that one from Providence. Deshaun drives and kicks. Townsend from the free throws right short. Just kind of pressing now. Just needs one to go in, you know? Yeah, sometimes it's hard when you're a freshman. There's a, a lid on the rim, but that's how you get yourself engaged. Block the, a shot on the defensive end. Griffin ran into traffic. The foul on the way up. Flyers foul number three. Megan Hooker. That's how 
how you do it. Second freshman Patterson just stepping in, disrupting things offensively for Providence. That's how you can build your confidence. Griffin will shoot free throws. So UConn with five blocks to go with five steals tonight. 20 assists on 27 made field goals. This team shares the ball so incredibly well. The very on the floor. It's going to get tied up. That'll be UConn's ball. The problem is, you know, DeBerry did a great job getting that offensive rebound. The hard part is when you put it on the floor. Yeah. Four PCs, number 33, number so four guards can come in there and either grab it or swat it away. Got to look more quickly for help. Somebody's got to be free. All right, so UConn will inbound the ball. 45 seconds to go in the quarter. 17 to shoot. begins its quest for a 22nd Big East regular season championship tonight. We asked you which opponent is UConn's biggest threat to UConn's winning that title. Our Duncan fan poll survey says Creighton, and that's a good pick. Jim Flannery's squad making the Elite Eight a year ago. They are locked in a fight with Villanova right now. Two top 25 teams playing in Philly. It was a one-point game. At and we see uh, a little Mets. Commemoration here for Tunnel Cologne with us in the house at Gamble. Mets news breaking right now. Jacob DeGrom has signed with Texas. Yes. With Texas. SNY's social platforms. have more information for you right now. Remember, though, the Rangers come to City Field. Uh huh. August 28th, 29th, and 30th. So you think you'll pitch that? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Mets fans. Yeah. yeah, that's a tough one. All right, so we start the fourth quarter. Um, first of all, by saying sorry for the technical difficulties. We were trying to get Gino that whole third quarter squared away, and it didn't work. We'll get him after the game. It was our intention. <laughs> really, it was our intention. He did have the earpiece in. Oh, yes! Gets on the scoreboard. Nice to get a bucket there. Her first points as a Husky. Listen to these fans roll for her. Deshaun, no. Rebound. It's going to be a foul. It's going to be on to go. Ian Ashbeth in court, the freshman from Portugal. Used all the rim twice. A nice screen from Patterson, and you see the bench reaction. They were psyched. Everybody happy. This is a really great group. They get along really well. You can just see it in the way they play. Driving, cut off by Aubrey Griffin. There's Cruz. Lowers the shoulder into Griffin. And that will be an offensive foul on Providence. Outstanding defensive sequence there for Aubrey Griffin. She cut off Cook on the wing. And then comes down here, stops the ball. Cruz had lowered the left shoulder. Griffin had gotten to the space in time. Just excellent footwork. Janae Cruz averages 16 points a game. 
had three 20-point games this year. She has four tonight here in Denver. Well, she does more than score. There is the Berry on the scoreboard. Nice left-handed lay in there by DeBerry. Well, when you talk about Janae Crooms, I mean, she's the only active player in the Big East. She's got 1,000 points, 500 rebounds, 350 assists, 100 steals, and 100 blocks. Nobody else in the Big East has that. Yet. She has been a solid find for the Jim Collins program as Bettencourt gets her pocket picked. You can see Shepard coming up from behind. Tonight in our next UConn game on SNY, we'll be right back here and on Thursday night as the Huskies take on the Princeton Tigers. On the movie, bring your squad back to town. We'll start with the pregame show at 6.30, only here on SNY. Our game reset is presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Some of the numbers on the night. UConn's defense holding Providence's leading scorer, Janet Cruz, to four points so far. And Aubrey Griffin started hot in this one and uh, has led the way for UConn. She and Lou Lopez Seneschal with 18 points apiece. Yeah, they spread the offense around pretty nicely. Four players in double figures. And, and you know, Dorka Juhas, you see there sitting in between Ice Brady and Paige Beckers. She should be getting back, you know, back on the court. She, she's been practicing a little bit. She's got this splint on her thumb now. She won't play Sunday, most likely. But, you know, could be back maybe Thursday against Princeton. Olsen, who gets the bucket for Providence. Luke, uh, Dorka, excuse me, had that uh, splint fitted by Sports Medicine today at shoot-around and did some drills with the team with it on. Uh, they just don't think she's ready yet to go full contact in a game. But There's no reason to rush it. That's it. DeBerry for three, no. And Juhas has been working out, so she's she's in shape. Yeah. You know, she's not necessarily in basketball playing shape, and, you know, in terms of chemistry and, and everything with the team, but she's been working out a lot, so not much has been lost there. Shepard. No, DeBerry. Another reach for a rebound, but it fell away from her. And a good pass inside to Logan Cook for Providence Park. Yeah, uh, great uh, pass from Shepard. I'll say this. Jim Crowley told us when we met with him before the game, he, what he wanted to see out of his team tonight was defensive discipline, but compete. He wanted to see them compete for all 40 minutes. They have done that. They have. You know, it's hard to be de disciplined defensively when you're playing one of the top scoring teams in the country. When they came here last February on senior day, uh, UConn had a 29 0 run at one point. He didn't feel like they competed for all 40 minutes that day. They have today, and all credit to them. The schedule not very friendly to the Friars as they go home to face Villanova on Sunday. Back to back, the opponents coming to town and give these play. Five to shoot. Shepard drives, blocked by Bud. Well, your chance to join us for UConn women's basketball as uh, they host defending national champion South Carolina at the XL Center on Sunday, February 5th, UConnTickets.com. Uh, is where you can build your own mini ticket package and then make that one part of your plan to join us at Gamble or at XL. Roller inside and by Logan Cook. So coming up on halfway from quarter number four, all available players from UConn have played in this game and scored. Well, remember, they don't have money. There's Lee Edwards out of line. That'll be 13 and 10 
for Edwards. You know, Danny Hurley sitting behind the bench here tonight. You know, his team, he's got, how, how, what are they, 15 deep? Yeah. The UConn men. Gino's got nine players. That's it. That is a timeout Gracie. from Providence as Gracie Fosa got the ball to go in on the bounce off the rim. So check out our Take It to the Rim moment brought to you by Duncan. How about Aaliyah Edwards and the nice pass from Amari DeBerry? As uh, Edwards has had just another outstanding game for UConn tonight. And DeBerry is a terrific passer. Edwards did a nice job. Rolling away from a player. Great pass. Big Dan Aim is Lloyd Vandrias in there. Enjoying the game. The only winner of the Oklahoma State here last night at Gamble uh, in a rocket house for the Yukon men. We've seen, we've seen a lot of this, of course, in the tournament, the Phil Knight tournaments out in Oregon where the teams, the men's and women's, traveled together. We're both in the stands cheering the other on. These uh, programs are both very close. Gino talked about how nice it was to see that closeness between them. Yeah, and, and it's been like that for a long time, but in this particular group, they are, they're just, they really get along well, they support each other, and a lot in common. DeBerry gets the turnaround right here. Next action for the UConn men will be next Wednesday when they get on the plane and head down to Kingsville, Florida to take on the Gators on the road. Imagine the PD season this year. Oh, oh my goodness. Creighton, Marquette, um, all of them. Yeah, you know, yeah. All. <laughs> yeah. Switch, 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 switch. Yeah, De well, DeBerry, DeBerry tried to pass the ball inside to Ducharme. It got kicked from a Providence player. That's what it was. It's the ball. Oh. Mule to Ducharme. That's just knowing the play and reading what's going on. Outstanding pass from Mule to the cutting Ducharme. How good to see Deshaun back in full form after uh, struggling physically early in the season. Yeah, she came, she really came out. She had her little coming out party this season from her injury against Iowa in Portland. And I think it was the difference in the game. Five to shoot, yes, sorry. Yeah, I mean, she, she was in that second half when it was needed. Yeah, made a couple big threes. Some key rebounds. It's nice to see. Here's Edwards. Spins. And gets fouled on the way to a left hand attempt. And just the little things. Look at how her teammates ran over to pick her up. I mean, those are just the little things that you notice with this program that not every team does. So the foul on Cook. And we will see Aliyah Edwards at the free throw line. The line on. Yeah, Edwards the junior two. Edwards tonight, 13 points so far, five of eight from the floor, <laughs> ten rebounds. I mean, the double double is now the norm. Two blocks, one steal, only two turnovers, and that was the first free throw she's missed all night. She's four and five from the free throw strike. You notice I hesitated saying it until she shot. <laughs> Why? I wasn't going there. <laughs> you don't want to be this guy. Uh, That's my shot, That's my shot, Just a oh. She oh. uh, Amari DeBerry driving into the lane. DeBerry, a new career high in the uniform for rebounds in this game. More facts and figures on the night. Coming up with Gary Apple and Carol Walters. They'll have a full recap of tonight's game. You'll hear Gino Auriemma's post-game news conference as well. It's the UConn Women's Basketball Post-Game Show presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Right after the game. Three to go. Nika Mule and Aliyah Edwards just went to the bench. Finish betting court. Checks back in. Aubrey Griffin. Caroline Ducharme and Alan Patterson on the floor. That foul will be called on betting court. So, Meg, the list of season's goals for UConn, when you ask Gino, always starts with win your conference regular season championship.
it's going to be a big task this year. It's not obviously UConn is favorite. They were the unanimous choice of all the Big East coaches to win the title. But they're going to get challenged along the way. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the years of, of them going undefeated, I think uh, that's that's a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to lose some games, but they're a much better team than a lot of people thought they were. There, one goes for Patterson after the nice pass on the run. <laughs> of course, Paige Breckers had to go up and choke with Chino. Usually the kids just go up and high-five their teammates. She's got a special relationship with him. He was laughing. Maybe trying to hide it, but he was laughing. Good to see him have a chance to get players like Patterson so much time. There's back and forth. Yes! That's the three. And a big smile on her way back down the court. And cheers from... Page backers as well. So Morgan Valley just said to Page, hey, be careful. Yeah, jumping really. around like that. Don't hurt that lead cheer. Too strong. Aubrey Griffin tried to box out for the rebound. Oh. Bettencourt got a hand on the ball, I thought, but the body contact perhaps. We'll draw the foul. Freshman to freshman. And the reaction on the bench was great. <laughs> Morgan Valley's not wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and by the way, a shout out to the student section tonight. Uh, they had it full all the way to the top for most all of the game. Some may have drifted on to other Friday night activities now with the score line being what it is. I think I know where I would be. Uh, okay. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be here. Okay. But, uh, man, they were out there starting with you. The section here is unbelievable. Close it on that number. And still a minute and a half to go. It's an equal their high score of the season. They said in the opener against Northeastern. There's a close up. No, that can the rebound. Patterson. Patterson, three points, one of five from the floor tonight. But that last one that went, maybe that's the one that takes the cover off. Into the Berry. Should have just gone straight up with that. Solid defensive night for the Berry in time on the field. Five to shoot. Students in full war. Here's a closer with the step back. Sure. Five thirty seconds here. And Gino waving them off. Hold on here. Kids can sometimes get a little excited. They they love to try to go for a hundred. There's no need for that. On a night when UConn shoots 61 percent from the floor, 56 percent from long range, our rebounds Providence 41 to 32, and every available player plays and scores. UConn starts its Big East campaign with a 98-53 win over longtime foe Providence. Now, for the Huskies over the Frogs. Our player of the game is headed by CSCU. Very appropriately nominated Aubrey Griffin. You see the numbers on Aubrey. She did a lot of damage early to get this Husky team going in the first quarter when they raced out to a 21-point lead on Providence. And Griffin with a season high in points and a double-double on the night. Aubrey Griffin is our player of the game. Hey, Gino, thanks for coming on with us here. Uh, congratulations on the win. You got to feel really good in front of a great crowd the way your team played in their Big East opener. Yeah, yeah, you know, we... Uh, 
we were hoping that we would be able to get out to a fast start. You know, uh, I, I I think the team uh, defensively is is you know we're we're pretty locked in. Uh, you know, we kind of have been for um, for the majority, almost you know the entire season so far. Uh, and the ball movement was way better than you know than it was I think over the, over the weekend. So uh, we accomplished a, a bunch of things, and um, it was great to get a win. The crowd's been unbelievable. I mean, our students and the fans that have come out have been unbelievable. And it'll be a little bit harder on Sunday. <laughs> yes, it will on the road. You had 28 assists on 36 field goals. Really efficient offense. And what can you say about how Audrey Griffin has changed your team this year? Well, that's the thing that we were trying to get uh, get her to do, you know, the things that she's good at. And she started the game, you know, attacking the basket and getting herself involved in transition baskets. Uh, you know, that's got to be her game. And, uh, you know, we had a long talk with, with not just her, but the whole team in terms of, you know, you have to understand who you are, what you, what you excel at, and keep doing those things. And we have to have them every day. You know, it can't be, you know, Tuesdays, yes, and Fridays, no. Um, you know, as I said, Albie's unique on our team. We don't have anybody else like her. So if we can get that every single time we play, obviously that makes us, you know, uh, a much better basketball team. Well, and similarly, Aaliyah Edwards and her consistency this year, you talk about showing up every day. I mean, I know she's been doing it in practice, but she is unstoppable at times. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's been a big, uh, big point of emphasis. Uh, how it has to be every day, how it has to be every possession, every day. So she's taken that to heart. You know, she's really worked hard on her game. Uh, you know, we have X number of games that we played, and we got a whole bunch left, and just trying to get better at them every day. All right, thanks, man. Good luck right. at, uh, out in South Bend. All right, thanks, everybody. Our interview with the Hall of Fame head coach is presented by PC Richard and Son. Lot to digest from this one and lots more still to come, both from here in Gamble and from Gary and Kara back in the studio. Nika Mule, 12 assists, just one of the headlines for the Huskies.